So I'm reading this article right here by Jose Baez, and it talks about how he's saying, you know, the evidence in a George Zimmerman case is very weak. Um, and if you a little bit of background information on Baez, he was the attorney for Casey Anthony, and he's also representing Chris Serino right now. And the thing I want to say about this case is, you know, you have to examine it for what it is. You know, you have to say, you know, what evidence is there against George Zimmerman? Okay, um, that that the probably the most hardest thing is gonna, the prosecutor is going to have to prove is is that um, George Zimmerman wasn't defending himself, and you know the marks on his body, you know the the beating that he took, and the fact of the grass stains on his back, it backs up George Zimmerman's uh, story. So the only way that you could say that George Zimmerman was guilty is if of murder is if you're if you take the position that Trayvon Martin was defending himself and then George Zimmerman shot him. Well, the one thing I can say is there's nobody to tie that theory um, into uh, the prosecution's point except if you accept Dee Dee's testimony. Okay, but Dee Dee's testimony has a lot of issues with it, okay? You know, the, the okay, she's, according to Orlando Sentinel, uh, she's been caught in some lies, right? So you can read about it here. And, you know, the thing is, is that's going to add some credibility. That's going to throw some doubt. And if there's any any reasonable doubt, you know, you have to quit, right? But even if she wasn't caught in any lies, you have to examine her story. Now, her story is, I tell you, it, it really doesn't fit. I mean, if she, she stated in her testimony that Trayvon Martin was, it, you know, scared and that he started running, okay, as if he, you know, you could tell what she was inferring, that maybe he was in fear for his life, okay? But George Zimmerman was on the phone for two minutes after George uh, Trayvon Martin started running. And the run from where Trayvon started was only, his house was only about 110 yards away, okay? So Trayvon Martin probably could have done a 100-yard dash and went. 15 seconds, 20 if he's really slow. Uh, but, you know, he looked like a slender kid, and, you know, he probably could have done it in probably in about 14 seconds or something, you know, 100 yards, 110 yards, maybe 15, maybe 20 seconds, maybe. Um, so, you know, um, and then, in addition, uh, it was two minutes after the phone call that Trayvon Martin ended up getting shot. So this is like four minutes, okay? You, you have to ask yourself, what was Trayvon Martin doing at the same spot? Well, about 40 feet, I guess, away from the original spot where he started to run. Uh, what was he doing there four minutes later? Let's well, see. You know, this is what I'm trying to say is there's no real logical explanation for this. If you're in fear for your life, you know you're gonna you're gonna run, and if you're and you're more than likely gonna keep running. And you know another thing that doesn't fit is you know you have an adult on the phone, Dee Dee. She doesn't call the police or attempt to do anything. Um, so if Trayvon was in fear for her life, what is an adult doing doing nothing? You know about this whole thing. You know not calling the police, not doing anything, right? Uh, Trayvon Martin was 17 years old. How come he didn't call the police? You know, you, you got to ask that. And so there's so many things in the story that just doesn't fit. So, you know, my view is this. Okay, Johnny Cochran taught me this. If the story doesn't fit, you must acquit. All right. Well, we'll just wait to see what happens in the trial and. Um, until then, you know, I'm out of here.